Welcome to OET Answers. Occupational English Test OET Answers Practice Test Listening Test Part A. In this part of the test, you'll hear two different extracts. In each extract, a health professional is talking to a patient. For questions 1 to 24, complete the notes with information you hear. Now, look at the notes for extract 1. Extract 1. Questions 1 to 12. You hear a GP talking to a patient called Sarah about acoustic neuroma. For questions 1 to 12, complete the notes with a word or short phrase. You now have 30 seconds to look at the notes. Hi, it's Sarah, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Hi, Dr. Martin. I haven't seen you for a while. How have you been doing, and what brings you in today? Yeah, I've been meaning to come in for a checkup. Lately, I've been experiencing this constant ringing in my ear for a few weeks now, and it's getting a bit annoying. I thought it might just go away on its own, but it hasn't and I just want to know what's going on. I see. I'm glad you came in. Let's try to get to the bottom of this. When did you first start noticing the ringing in your ear? Do you recall any specific incident that might have triggered it? I think it's been about a month now. It started off really faint, like a barely noticeable hum, but now it's become pretty constant and loud enough that it's hard to ignore. That sounds frustrating, Sarah. Constant ringing in the ear, known as tinnitus, can be quite bothersome. Have you noticed any other symptoms accompanying the ringing, such as dizziness or trouble with your balance? Yes, actually, I have. I didn't think much of it at first, but I've felt a bit off balance lately, especially when I'm walking. Sometimes I get these sudden bouts of dizziness that make me feel like the room is spinning. It's good that you mentioned that. Feeling off balance and experiencing dizziness could be related to what's happening with your ear. Have you noticed any changes in your hearing or a feeling of fullness in that ear? Now that you mention it, yes. My hearing in that ear hasn't been great recently. It's like everything sounds muffled sometimes, like I have cotton in my ear. It's been really frustrating, especially when I'm trying to have a conversation or listen to something important. That sounds concerning, Sarah. Have you ever experienced any pain in your ear or headaches? No, I haven't really had any pain in my ear. But I do get headaches more often than I used to, especially in the last few weeks. Headaches can sometimes be linked to ear issues, especially if there's something affecting the inner ear or the nerves connected to it. How has your general health been otherwise? Any recent illnesses or stress that you think might be contributing to these symptoms? Well, I had a cold a couple of months ago, but I don't think it's related. The cold wasn't that bad, just the usual sneezing and stuffiness. But I have been really stressed with work lately. The long hours, tight deadlines, and constant pressure are really taking a toll on me. Stress can indeed have a significant impact on your overall health and can sometimes exacerbate symptoms like the ones you're experiencing. But with the combination of symptoms you're describing, particularly the ringing in your ear, balance issues and hearing changes, there's a specific condition called an acoustic neuroma that we might need to consider. Acoustic neuroma? What exactly is that? It sounds serious. It's understandable to feel concerned, Sarah, but let me explain. An acoustic neuroma is a non-cancerous growth that develops on the vestibular nerve, which connects your inner ear to your brain. This nerve plays a key role in both hearing and balance, 
When a growth like this occurs, it can cause symptoms like tinnitus, hearing loss, and balance problems, which seem to match what you've been experiencing. Although it's a rare condition, it's important to investigate further to rule it out or confirm it. Wow, I had no idea something like that even existed. What do we do next? Is there a treatment for it if that's what it is? The next step would be to refer you to an ENT specialist for a more thorough examination. The specialist will likely perform a hearing test to assess the extent of any hearing loss and may recommend an MRI scan to get a detailed image of the area around your inner ear. If it turns out to be an acoustic neuroma, the specialist will go over the treatment options with you which can vary depending on the size of the growth and the severity of your symptoms. That sounds a bit overwhelming, but I'm glad we're looking into it. I just didn't expect something like this when I came in. It's completely understandable, Sarah. These things can be worrying, but the important thing is that you're taking the right steps by getting it checked out. We'll take it one step at a time, and I'll be here to guide you through the process. I'll make the referral today and we'll get you in to see the specialist as soon as possible. Thanks, Dr. Martin. I really appreciate your help and support. I'll do my best to follow your advice and stay positive. You're welcome, Sarah. We'll get to the bottom of this together and confident we'll find a solution that works for you. Extract 2. Questions 13 to 24. You hear a doctor talking to a patient called Miss Collins regarding acne. For questions 13 to 24, complete the notes with a word or short phrase. You now have 30 seconds to look at the notes. Good morning, Ms. Collins. I'm Dr. Reynolds. I see you've come in today about your skin. Can you tell me what's been going on? Morning, doctor. Yes, I've been having a really hard time with acne lately. It's been flaring up a lot more than usual, and nothing I'm doing seems to help. I'm feeling really frustrated. I can understand how frustrating that must be. How long have you been dealing with these flare-ups? It started getting worse about three months ago. Before that, I used to get the occasional pimple, but now it's like my whole face is breaking out. I've got a lot of painful spots around my chin, jawline, and even on my back. Three months of worsening acne, that's quite a while. Have you noticed anything that seems to trigger the flare-ups or make them worse? Well... I think stress might be playing a part. I've been really busy at work, and I've noticed that the acne seems to get worse when I'm stressed. But I've also been trying different skincare products to see if they help, but they either don't do much or seem to make things worse. Stress can definitely contribute to acne, and sometimes switching products too frequently can irritate your skin further. Have you tried any specific treatments or medications for acne? I've tried over-the-counter creams, like benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid, but they haven't made a big difference. I also started using a new face wash that's supposed to be gentle, but I'm not sure if it's helping or not. It sounds like you've tried a few things, but without much success. Sometimes over-the-counter treatments aren't enough, especially if the acne is more severe. Have you ever been prescribed medication for acne in the past? No, I've never had to go on prescription medication before. My acne was never this bad. But now I'm starting to feel like I need something stronger. We have a few options that might be more effective for you. Depending on the severity, we could start with a topical treatment like a retinoid or consider an oral medication. 
Sometimes, a combination of both can work best. Have you heard of these treatments before? I've read a bit about retinoids, but I've never tried them. I'm open to whatever will help. I just want to get my skin under control again. Retinoids can be very effective in treating acne. They help to prevent clogged pores and reduce inflammation, but they can also cause some irritation, especially when you first start using them. I'd recommend starting with a lower concentration and gradually increasing it. We could also consider an oral antibiotic if there's a lot of inflammation and if the acne isn't responding well to topical treatments. I'm willing to give it a try. Would I need to be on these treatments long term? It depends on how your skin responds. Typically, we'd start to see improvements within a few weeks, but it might take a few months to see significant changes. Once your acne is under control, we can gradually reduce the treatment or switch to maintenance therapy. It's important to be consistent with the treatment and patient with the results. Okay, that makes sense. Is there anything else I should be doing in the meantime to help my skin? There are a few things that can help. Try to stick to a gentle skincare routine, avoid harsh scrubs or over-cleansing, as these can irritate your skin further. Moisturizing is important, too, even if you have oily skin, as it can prevent dryness and irritation. Also, try to manage stress as best as you can and keep an eye on your diet. Sometimes, certain foods can exacerbate acne, though this varies from person to person. I'll try to keep that in mind. I've been trying to cut down on dairy because I heard that it can sometimes make acne worse. Do you think that could be helping? There's some evidence that dairy, especially skim milk, can contribute to acne in some people, but it doesn't affect everyone the same way. If you've noticed that your skin improves when you reduce dairy, it might be worth continuing. It's always a good idea to monitor how your skin reacts to different foods. I'll keep doing that. I just want to make sure I'm doing everything I can. That's a good approach. We'll start with the retinoid and see how your skin responds. If necessary, we can adjust the treatment plan. I'll also prescribe a gentle moisturizer to help with any dryness or irritation. If you notice any severe irritation or if your acne doesn't start improving after a few weeks, I want you to come back so we can reassess. Thank you, Dr. Reynolds. I really appreciate your help. I've been feeling so self-conscious about my skin lately. I understand how difficult that can be, Ms. Collins. We'll work together to get your skin back on track. Remember, it takes time, but with the right treatment, we should see some improvement. Do you have any other concerns or questions? No, I think that covers everything. Thank you again for your help. You're very welcome. If anything comes up, don't hesitate to reach out. We'll schedule a follow-up appointment in about six weeks to check on your progress. Sounds good. I'll see you then. Take care, Ms. Collins. Have a great day. Thanks, Doctor. You too.